Hi there, I'm Aussie Villain and this is my tutorial on scouting and transfers. Um, now what we have here is a Manchester City game that I've set up. Um, this is to sort of show how to scout from a big club's perspective and then what we'll do is we'll go to a smaller team and, and we'll go from there. Now what you want to do is you want to head obviously to the scouting thing and this is the screen that you'll have. Now if you go to assignments and you'll see what your scouts are currently doing now typically this is kind of what you'll see, there's a general scouting focus and you'll find typically if you set it up this way, which I think is a default, is that a staff member is going to be taking over how the scouts are being used. Now generally this is fine and most of the times this is what I do anyway, just let the chief scout or the director of football work it. But if you do want to get a little bit more involved, what you would need to do is just go over to that, click manager in the scouting responsibility and now we are in control of what we have our scouts do. So you want to go to create new assignment and then it will pop up this screen. Now this gives you a whole bunch of different options. You can search uh, players, you can obviously do a team or specific matches. Now typically if you're, if you're scouting to, to sign someone, which is what this tutorial is, then you'll want to obviously be searching for players. Now where this is, is really neat I think is that you can either search for all players which generally speaking is what I think you would want to do uh, and then that you have a couple of options if you go up to scouting range you can scout either a competition you can scout a, a nation as you can see there the types of nations that it's going to let us scout in the way I've set this game up you can scout a region or a continent now what I would always do especially if you have a number of scouts like a club like Manchester City will do it's just work your way down the list when you get to the bottom go back up to the top that way you're scouting the world so Caribbean's at the top so we go Caribbean we go add condition the only two that you really if you're just doing a general scout would care about is the scout current ability and scout potential ability I always go potential because if, if you sign, that's what you want if you sign a player that is currently really good but they might be on the way down it's not going to do you much good in terms of building for the the future what you want is potential because you've got to back yourself that you're going to get the most out of the player um, you will certainly wouldn't want to go any better than good if you're a club like Manchester City maybe very good would be the the lowest potential that you would really want um, obviously for clubs that have lesser ambition or lesser the current standing then you might want to go down to good um, so you want to scout here we'll just pick the guy at the top that's fine um, now if you want to scout until finished typically not you probably want to say go three months um, you don't necessarily need him doing the whole of the Caribbean though you could you you can it's not really a big deal and if you have enough scouts you can just do ongoing then that's fine as well what you again it's going to depend on how many scouts you have but you might want to have say someone scouting Central Europe ongoing just continuously scouting parts of Europe um, Scandinavia the South Americas um, you know the hotbeds of, of where football talent is and then for the less of places like oh, we've gone up there like the Caribbean like say East Asia Middle East you might just want to then rotate those ones around every three months or so that's purely up to you um, and then so we have Caribbean, we have a scout there for three months, scouting people of potential that are very good. Start assignment. And there we go, three months, he's going to be he's going to be off doing that. Now we can create a new assignment. Um, and one thing here that I think is a really, really neat way to do things is that if you know you have a player that's on the way out, it needs to be replaced, he's getting old, he's not doing exactly what you want, um, you can go over here. So we need a center back, Vincent Company, because he's injury prone for example um, now in this case the scope you probably you wouldn't want to limit yourself you just want to go scouting range so in Manchester City's case that is worldwide and I'll, I'll come to how to do that in just a second um, so you, again do you want scouted, scout a bill, uh, potential sorry whatever that may be and then scout and so the next guy down is going to look for a replacement for Vincent Company now to change the scouting range what you want to do is just go over to players player search and you'll see there the senior package so right now Manchester City is able to scout worldwide both youth and senior players um, a lot of the time it'll be a lesser package um, you want to you can see over here what the budget is 
So you need to obviously stay within the budget, um, but you'll want to you'll want to maximize what you can with your scouting budget because you want to you don't want to limit yourself in finding the next the next Messi, let's say, or Cristiano Ronaldo, depending where you fall on that divide. So that's how you would scout for a bigger team. Okay, so we've seen how Manchester City work their scouting. Now let's do the other end of the scale. This is uh, Bogner Regis. This is a Vanarama South club. Um, so this is the complete opposite end of the scale. Uh, so we can see here, if we go to player search, that the scouting budget is an absolute pittance. I think the actual scouts at Manchester City get paid more in a week than the scouting package is here for a year. Um, so therefore you can see there is no scouting packages because this club cannot afford them. Um, so that makes things a lot more complicated. So what you want to look to do in this case, if we go here, we'll put ourselves in charge of the scouts. If we want to go to create a new uh, new scouting assignment, you can see the only competitions that we can do are the English competitions. The only nation we can scout is England. So it, it really limits what you're able to do. You're pretty much always scouting for youth because you want to have the next find the next a player that you can sell on to make money for the club, uh, rather than somebody that's like a short-term fix. Uh, there are situations, obviously, where a short-term fix is what you need, in which case that you would just scout for a first-team player. Um, but I always scout for youth because you can build with youth, whereas a senior player might come in for a, a season or two, but then you're going to lose them, and you're not, or you've, you've unless you actually gain promotion through the leagues, and that's that that sort of last that last uh, piece of the of the jigsaw that's going to get you up. Um, I always always say scout youth. Now again, you would we want to look here for scouting potential, um, potential ability of good. Uh, then you would want to start the assignment. Now what you could do as well, as I said, uh, if you are looking for specific traits. Now in low non-league football, if, if for example, if you wanted a striker in low non-league football, you might you'd be looking for acceleration, you'd be looking for pace, you'd be looking for off the ball, you'd be looking for finishing they typically be what you would want um, if you can get composure in there if you can get a few other things then fair enough but think what are the basic traits so for example for a, a defender you probably you'd want pace and or jumping you might want strength off the ball won't matter so much composure won't matter so much neither will finishing but you might want heading and marking and tackling and you would also want positioning and probably teamwork as well. Um, concentration is always a good one for defenders as well. So it depends on the position that you're scouting for as to what the traits are. I don't like to limit myself because if I say I have heading ability of 10 and the scout finds a player where everything else is really, really good but heading's 9, they're not going to recommend them. And that, you know, your one, one ability point, I guess you would call it, off what could actually be a really good player for you. So I don't like to limit the actual um, the actual traits. I like to just let the scouts go out and find find what they need to find for me. But yeah, it is it's a completely different world down in <laughs> in Bognor Regis than it would be for Manchester City. So Manchester City you can pretty much have whoever you want. So he's, you can see he's valued at forty eight million. Typically you would have wanted to scout him to make sure of you know that he is a, the player or the person is the player that you want. We know Dybala is the player that we want. So it's going to take some big money to get him out. So let's say we start with 60 million. Now what you want to look to do is to limit the risk to yourself. So rather than bidding, we have a transfer budget of 80 million. So rather than, than bidding 80 million straight up, let's say we start with, let's say we, we'll start with what he's valued at, 48. Now, obviously, Juventus isn't going to accept that. So then what we can look to do is add in bonuses that are perhaps in our favor. So after 50 league games, maybe we want to add in another 2.5. After he scores, say, 30 goals for us, we'll add another 2.5. After he scores 50 goals for us, we'll add another 2.5. So what you're doing is you're you're adding to the transfer fee once he once he's proving himself to be a good signing for you. Now it's unlikely. What's that put the total value up? 
56 million. It's unlikely they're going to accept that, actually. So let's maybe, after 50 league games, we'll add another 5 million. And let's see what happens if we hit suggested terms. Okay, so we can see there that they want 163 million. Now that's that's unrealistic because that's over our budget. So let what we can do is we can maybe go to 60 and then we can up these ones. So after 50 games, maybe we'll give them 10 million. After 30 goals, let's say five. After 50 goals, another five. And you can see here they got the percentage of next sale. If we can remove that, we will because if we do sell him on, we don't want to be splitting that with Juventus, we want to keep that to ourselves where possible. Given how much they're asking for him, it's probably not going to work in this case. If you're the selling club, however, you always want to add percentage of next sale rather than the profit. Because the, what the profit does is, so say we, we sign him for 60 million and then we sell him for 80 million down the road. So the profit is 20 million, so you, you'll be getting, say, 20% of 20 million as opposed to 20% of 80 million if you have the, just, just the percentage of the next sale. So obviously it's a greater, far greater amount. So you always want to make sure if you are the, uh, the selling club, you want percentage of next sale as close to 50% as you can get it. So it'll usually be negotiated down, but if you can get to 50, you're better off taking us almost a smaller transfer fee, especially if it's a young player that's only going to go up in value. You're better off having a smaller transfer fee and that higher percentage because it is going to benefit you in future. Another thing too, if you are a smaller team buying a player from a larger team that is on quite a salary, if you can get them to um, to contribute to the wage. So obviously if, you know, 220000 a week, if we were, let's say, Burnley, is not going to work. But we could maybe offer a hundred grand a week. We could ask the the selling team if they will contribute a hundred grand a week. Now, if this is a a big wage player that they just want to get off their books, let's you know think uh, Wayne Rooney at Manchester United last season. Um, then they they might be willing to do that just to get get him out of the dressing room and and they even though they're still paying a hundred grand a week in wages, they'd be saving in this case a hundred and twenty. So it, they may see that as worth their while. It's a good way to get a high earning player into a club that can't afford the wages. Okay, so let's try this now. So you can see they're pretty insistent on the on the twenty percent, and given that they want a hundred and thirty-five million for him, we may just have to let that go. So eighty million is our is the maximum budget we can have. Let's see if we can add in a fee after twenty league games. of say 5 million. Now these things here, they're not necessarily going to come out of your transfer budget either. So that's always something to to remember. They're future payments that aren't necessarily guaranteed to take place. Let's go 7.5 and 7.5. So you can see every time we're getting this down a little bit more, a little bit more. So it's starting to look to me as though we might be able to get a deal done here for Dybala. So if we go back to 80, because that's the most we can offer right now. Let's go 7.5 there. After 50 games. Let's try 15. And then after league goals, so let's try both of these at 10. Okay, as the Juventus have accepted that offer. Uh, so you can see that by negotiating and adding on these additional fees that we've we've got it down to a point now where we can actually afford the transfer fee. Um, whereas, you know, the initial bid of, what was it, 160 a million or something that they wanted, we've negotiated that down to a point now where we can we can afford it. So that's that's how you that's how you would do that. You want to try and structure the offer in a way that it's fu your, your future payments, so that if Dybala comes in, is a terrible signing, does his knee, can't hit the back of the net to save himself. What we've done is we've wasted 80 million instead of wasting 160 million. Okay, so Devon Kelly Evans is definitely not Dybala, but for Bogner Regis, he very well could turn out to be just as crucial. Uh, so what we are going to look to do here is bid for a player with absolutely no transfer budget. Now we can see here that his contract is up at the end of the year. So what we could look to do, now he is also listed for loan. Now in this situation what you could look to do is 
to loan the player till the end of the year. Uh, and then if you like him, you could just simply simply go and sign him. Um, but we're going to pretend that his contract isn't up at the end of the year and bid for him nonetheless. So we know that we can't offer a transfer fee. So what can we offer? Now, in, if you're in a club where where money is tight and you need to, to, to sell to buy, then one thing that you can look to do is to put in the clause, you need to sell player first. Um, obviously, then the name of the player will come up and... Uh, where is it here? So you can just lock that in so that that is a non-negotiable part of the clause. Um, that's not the case in this place. We're just looking to do, we're just looking to bring a player in. So we could look to offer a few things. First of all, you you want to see you want to see if will they just accept a bit of zero? Uh, they feel it's acceptable and are pleased that such a swift negotiations have taken place. So that's perfect. In this case, we've just lucked out. They really just want to get rid of him. We can get him for nothing. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Okay, now that's not always going to be the case. Now we can see here we have somebody else. They uh, contract us up at the end of the year. Again, now they're listed for loan and transfer. Let's, for the sake of this, pretend that he's not listed for, for loan. Now, obviously, 75000 is way, way out of our budget. So again, we need to go to zero and see what they will do. Now you can see they're not willing to budge on that for zero. Now at this point you'd have to say it's, it is unlikely that we're going to be able to get a deal done here. But let's say after 50 league games we'll give them say 50 grand. Okay now you can see that they have they have accepted that. So what we've done there is that we have we've not going to spend anything. We've got a player that is valued relatively highly for fifty thousand pounds in at least two years time uh now arguably in two years time that could bankrupt the club but that's not our <laughs> not our problem right now um just in doing that this just it just shows an example of how you can you can you can make offers for players based on future payments to get deals done now and then that's you know pay for them if later on when when things work out and of course the beauty of this is that we could sell him before he gets to 50 games and we've got 49 brilliant games out of him and not pay a penny okay so what we're going to do now is look at renewing a contract now this works roughly the same if it's someone that's you're trying to bring in through the transfer market that you've made an approach for so we're going to go with david silver here his contract is up at the end of next season uh, so we don't want to let it run down for too long typically you don't want to let them get within the last year of the contract um, you want to renew the year before that so if there's two years left on the contract that's the time to negotiate the new one you don't want to get to a situation where the summer before it expires um, they're playing hardball and then you're going to have a hard time selling the player for the full value of what you can get so we know david silva is or david silva is a, a key player uh, if we go to existing terms this is very useful when you're negotiating a, a renewal because you can see what they're on now and, and how you want to sort of maneuver things i don't that i don't think is an option necessarily if you're buying someone from another club uh, and typically if you're that's not going to be that much use to you anyway because they're going to want more money because why else would they move to your team? So we try and keep the wages the same. What I like to try and do is incentivize for, um, I guess, performance-based uh, payments. So if they're in the team of the year, then he's earned a little bonus there. Um, he already has the bonus for winning the Premier League and the Champions League. Let's go season goals. If he gets the 15 goals, and if he gets to 20 goals, we'll you know uh, give the bonus there 1.3. Now let's see if we're doing that. If we can actually get that weekly wage down a little bit, and let's throw the agent some money to see if he can. Um, okay, I guess <laughs> accept an offer that maybe is less in David Silver's interest, but a little bit more in his interest because he has a cool mill in his pocket. Um, the estimated demands there, we can see he's probably going to ask for more. But let's see how this goes. Okay, so he is looking for a pay raise, which is fair enough because he is a very good player. He's a key player in the team. So let's go 195. We can see what the agent wants there. The unused substitute fee. Otherwise, things are going not too badly. Now, one clause that is always good to add as well 
if it's someone that you actually want to keep at the club for as long as possible is the extension that automatically triggers after so many games in the final year of the contract. Uh, so 20 games, if he's playing 20 games for us, chances are we wouldn't mind having him along for another year. So let's do that. Let's give the agent, let's go up to 5 mil, see if we can... We'll give him because now given that his contract is up in 2019 this is actually a two-year extension so let's see how that goes perfect so you can see that we have given him only five grand a week pay raise um, but we've now incentivized him in terms of goal scoring in terms of team of the year um, so he's not going to he's not necessarily just turning up for his weekly wage there's an incentive now for him to go out to score the goals to get in the team of the year if he's playing well in that final year he gets another year on his uh, tacked on to the same uh, same contract um, and that's exactly what we wanted to do so we've kept the play up we've barely increased the wage bill everybody's happy okay and now negotiating contracts renewals again uh, um, this is Bogner Regis's all-star central defender um, not going to play for Manchester City anytime soon, as you can tell. Uh, but his contract is up for renewal. And you can see here, he is on a part-time contract. Now, if we go again to use existing terms, we can see what he's currently on. Let's remove those because they're redded out. Um, now, we, if we can get him on less, which you always want to try and do when you are at a smaller club, we'll do that so we'll offer him 150 instead of 180 we'll put the appearance fee up to 50 clean sheet bonus I always think for a defender that's something that's worth having um, because as much as with an attacking player you want to incentivize them on goals with defenders and goalkeepers clean sheets are what they deal in so you want to incentivize them with clean sheets um, now for a central defender up from set pieces, sometimes a goal bonus is a worthwhile thing adding in, especially if you're trying to keep that weekly wage down. Um, again, always worth adding in the team of the year bonus. Um, so let's say we go to a thousand pounds if he does happen to make the team of the year. Uh, let's see how and we need to bump up his contract for a year. Let's see what he does. Okay, so he wants the 200 pounds now is that what he was currently on it's on 180 right now so let's see if we can maybe keep him at the 180 well let's see if we can get him down let's put the loyalty bonus up to 500 appearance fee we'll leave it at 60 unused substitute fee I'm not a massive fan of that but for the sake of keeping the weekly wage down let's try that and let's go team of the year an extra 500 so let's see if we can 160 promotion wage rise of 30 that's fine 30 percent at, at these numbers is minimal um, but let's see if we win the Vanarama if he gets let's say a 2,000 pound payoff if we can then remove that okay so you can see with that two thousand pound we have taken that down to twenty five percent it looks like he is pretty insistent on his wage not going down so we can renew him here on the same money which obviously getting a new contract without a pay raise is a decent thing there we go. So we've renewed our superstar defender for an extra year. We're not paying him any more money, but he's now more incentivized to win the league, to get clean sheets, team of the year. That's all going to work in our favor. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to do on this tutorial is just um, how to use the director of football with your transfers. Uh, now, there's a few different things that you can use him for. One is transfer targets. So say, for example, let's go back to scouting into my shortlist. Um, so we have Harry Hickford, who you would want to sign for the name if nothing else. Uh, if you don't want to play around with trying to chase him down and sign him, you can add as a transfer target. Free, he's currently a free transfer. Okay, add as transfer target, free transfer. So you can see here the type. So we want to sign him on a free transfer. Squad stat status automatic. Um, if you were someone that you wanted to maybe only play as a, or you view him as a prospect, then maybe do that. We'll put him in, he's gonna, he would be a first team if he was to sign. Uh, max offer amount 
I mean, it doesn't really matter because he's on a free transfer. Uh, max weekly wage amount, you can see that's the club's limit. Uh, so then we would just go to transfer targets and there he is, Harry Hickford transfer target. And now my director of football will look to get that that deal done. We can see here he would be a quality signing. Um, so that is how you would use him for transfer targets. Now the unwanted list, if you have a player that you do not want to keep, uh, so say for example, who's someone that we're not using right now? Say Corey Heath. So we would go to unwanted list, sell for, you, know, you can either sell for asking price, which you would set, sell for value, which we can see right now up here is 180 pounds. I could actually afford to buy a footballer. Uh, you can sell for half the value, sell at any price, um, which is basically a pound and more, or you could sell a release so that if you can't sell him, then he'll just release him from his contract. Uh, so if, say we go sell for asking price, we could set the minimal acceptable amount of say a thousand pounds, which given he's less than that is probably not going to happen. Um, but we can see there, all these other options are there. Go, you go to unwanted list and there's Corey Heath and your director of football will now look to sell him. And the other one is the development list. So if you have a young player that you're looking to develop outside of your club, so someone that's maybe not ready for first team football in your club just yet, um, but you want to, to give first team football to, uh, you obviously would need to do that elsewhere. So let's go say with Joe, Joe Lee, is it? Who did I click on there? Yeah, Joe Lee. So you go click on his name, go up to transfer, down to add to development list. Uh, and then you can see here that he's going to be put out on loan. Um, and these are the loan options. So can he be recalled? I always like to leave that open so that if something happens, you have an injury crisis, you can always call them back. Can play in cup games. It usually is something that you don't want to do because it, if they play in a cup game for another club, they, they then can't play in that same cup for you. Um, in this situation, I'm not that concerned about that. Loan cannot be terminated, so that means that the club that you're loaning to cannot cancel the loan deal for whatever reason. Um, it's up to you whether you'd want to do that or not. If it's not working out, sometimes it's best if they can just send him back. But of course, as long as you have that option to recall, you can always terminate it if that's, ha not, if that's happening anyway. Um, can play for parent club reserves. I mean, do you, if he's at another club, do you really want him playing for the reserves? Uh, it's always good to have the option if you are loaning your player out. If you are loaning somebody in, make sure this is off because you don't want suddenly to see someone that you're expecting to be playing in your first team back playing for, you know, Coventry reserves. So I always like to make sure that that's off if I am bringing somebody in. If you're sending them out, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Uh, if you go to the development list, you can see we have John Lees there. The director of football will now look to find him a suitable club where he's going to get first team football and can develop as a player. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial, the transfer and scouting tutorial. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have, give me a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. Um, I do have uh, a, a Let's Play going with Aston Villa, so if you haven't found that yet please do go and watch it it's a lot of fun and we're just we're trying to hashtag raise the hulk get villa back up to where they belong as european and world champions in my opinion but we'll get there eventually um, so thank you very much for watching i've been aussie villain and we'll catch you next time